I actually started playing when I was around uh, 16 or 17 in high school. I'm 24 now, so when the game first came out, I played for about two or three years. When I first played him, I was probably around 16 or 17 years old, and it was one of my first tournaments, and he actually wasn't that great back in the day. It's kind of brash, he talked about a smack, but then when he blew up and uh, I saw him at UMass, I had no idea it was him. I thought it was just some random really good hit. <laughs> what, what's your handle on Smash Bros? And he was like, oh, Korean DJ. I was like, holy crap. Like the uh, the legendary Korean DJ? Next. I thought I was decent in Melee because I'd been playing since I was like 11. I had read about Korean DJ, I don't know who he actually was. I landed one hit and got wrecked. He got 5%! <laughs> he's always been, I guess, quirky, like he'll do things that people don't expect, and that's one of the reasons he took everyone by surprise. KDJ went from nothing to the biggest stage Melee had ever known in less than a year. A year full of upsets and innovation, new rivals and old comebacks, all culminating in a match that would forever define him and the game he came to master. The finals go to PC Chris, winner of the New York City season opener. PC Chris was the first of the the young kids. They were all young, and they were just they were different than than Ken and As and Isaiah, or even myself and husband. They were a different breed. PC Chris paved the way for Korean DJ and Music King. All three of them basically came to prominence at the same time. PC had kind of you know started developing on a little bit earlier. M2K had gone to some local tournaments around here. Even he wasn't like. At, at, at that level yet. He didn't have any level of mind games really. He was just relying totally on his knowledge of, of tech skill. Korean DJ, we just didn't hear about at all. The first orchestra meeting I had was absolutely horrifying because I couldn't read sheet music. I just play by ear. For some reason, I became the, uh, the concert master <laughs> of the orchestra. And I just went from this guy who just has absolutely no idea how to read sheet music to becoming the concert master in four years. I was like, I don't know how that happened. My dad was like the CEO of his own like clothing store called J City. And it was really successful. We had many chains up in Boston. We we're actually looking, to, thinking about extending it to like New England. I remember it was second grade. Um, my dad and my mom went to a business trip down in Florida. My dad had to go pick up some shipments, some jeans from China that he had imported. One of my dad's friends gave him a referral. It's like, oh, this guy can give you a ride. The guy went to a bar and he was pretty hammered. He dozed off on the wheel crashed into a concrete wall. Doctors were like, no, this guy has only like a 10% chance of living. As a second grader, it's, you don't really understand the magnitude of how serious things are. He just wouldn't give up. Like, he just didn't care. He just wanted to just get better. Just to see that happen, you know, it's really inspirational. Like. Like to see him like going through all this stuff. My father was in the hospital in recovering. My mom had to go to work. So most of the time I was by myself. A lot of the things that I did to really pass the time was like video games. I think the first serious tournament he went to was the one I 
ended up running. I used to play with the Fall River crew, it was a Ninja Turtles, it was Crazy Jones, Hayato, Roga, Eve, Unknown Force. He understood the game like decently well, but you would never have guessed he was going to be one of the best players in the world at that point. I wasn't really, I was doing okay. I was in like maybe ninth place in my local tournaments. It was like decent, but I wasn't like, I wasn't satisfied. I wrote down a list of all the people around me. Who's better than me? It was like a ladder process. I do it step by step by step by step by step. I went to a tournament on the East Coast randomly, but I didn't have a partner. I asked around on the boards, and one guy offered, his name was Korean DJ. And this was when he wasn't so good, and I was fucking excellent. You know, I was like, let me, let me just kind of keep looking around, like, but I really didn't want to team with him. Like, I didn't know who he was, he wasn't doing very well, like, he was just kind of low level. You knew every good person in the country. Now, let's say I was as good as I was, which I know I'm not, you don't know who can beat you. You can go into a tournament and lose to someone whose name you don't know because there's just so much skill, and also the spectrum is, is, is wider and there's more notches along the way. And Instead, when I show up, he money matched. He asked me for a money match. We uh, were playing uh, money matches. He wants to money match me. I was notorious for money matching literally everybody. I don't care how good you are. I don't care if you can. I don't care if you're PC Chris. I don't care if you're Azio. I'll money match you five bucks. Truth be told, I, I spanked him. Like, I messed him up. I craned him, and he said, again. I'm your money boss. Craned him again. I was like, I think you need to let some other people. He asked me to money match. I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> he intentionally knew at first he was going to lose a lot of them, but you have to factor in the money. Um, he was paying maybe five dollars or whatever it was to get matches with the best players and they were going to be taking it more seriously than they would in friendlies where they almost never play seriously and almost always sandbag. And he goes, okay, we'll rematch again. It's like, all right, sure. <laughs> he wants to give me more money, that's fine with me. Next event, it was an MLG. He had a chance to play them and get to learn their styles and see what it was they were doing and figure out why he was losing. And I was like, wow, I'm starting to, to get better. He just started improving exponentially every time he would play. And it was down to the wire, it was down to the last hit. And I was just thinking, this kid is hitting fucking good. I wouldn't be surprised if he beat me in tournament at that point. I saw him starting to annihilate people like Neo and chilling in money matches and just like destroy them. And they were like, what the hell? Who is this kid? And I can't even keep up with them. Kind of turned from feeling sorry for him to kind of having a lot of respect for him because he was willing to get his ass beat. Ever since then, I wasn't even close. And it was a brilliant strategy that very few other players were doing. At every tournament, he had the plan of, in the end, becoming the best. I felt like me and KDJ instantly got along. I mean, I, I feel like I had a lot of rivals, but me and Korean DJ are another rivalry, because like New York versus Boston, we got that going on. I hung out with him the most out of any of the other professional players, and definitely had a great time hanging out with him. He's a good guy. They had five normal tournaments, like regional tournaments, like one in New York, one in Texas, one in Chicago, one in Florida, and then one in Cali. And then they had a playoff in New York and then a final in Las Vegas, and that was like the 2006 lineup. All the regional ones were $2,000 for first place. For New York playoffs, first place was $5,000. The finals in Vegas was 10000 I didn't have any trouble winning locals, but I also just didn't get too much like pleasure out of it. H2O was pretty much dead. Azen wasn't playing. I started to think, you know, okay, maybe I should retire as well, like Azen is. But Azen decided to come back. He was really excited about it. He was like, okay, you know, now that uh, there's this point system and shit, like, let's see what we can do, given that we've already missed a couple events. So we go to Chicago. This is JV. I'm checking in with uh, Dreffen here again. We're watching 
a big match of uh, Isaiah and Eason. You know, the crazy thing about Eisen is he had just come back from a hiatus, but he was already, like, his goal was first, period. When Asim would take retirements, it seemed to like clear his mind when it came to Smash and he would come back even better somehow, even though he hadn't been playing at all. Live here, we got a big match here. We got Mewtwo King versus Ozzen. Uh, we're down to the top four in single. It's really looked like Ozzen's got some momentum going in that last match, and uh, let's see how long he carries it over here. Some nice combos by Mewtwo King. He pulled off, uh, let me think if I can recap that real quick. Two up airs, a back air, a neutral air, and then a up smash, and that was a beautiful stock by Mewtwo King. When he first came out, I despised him. He represented everything terrible about the Smash community. Like I was saying earlier about how cool it was when we found out about DA and that they're not just these basement dwelling nerds. M2K was that basement dwelling nerd. Especially when he started to get good is when I really had a problem with him because I didn't want this guy to be the face of Smash. For that reason, I was I was kind of mean to him for a while, which I, I do regret because it was kind of baseless, you know, just the fact that he looks like a nerd. <laughs> As he's trying to do his best to get uh, Mewtwo King onto a platform because that's when he can really do some heavy duty combos right there. He knows he can't afford it. Oh, and that looks like it will end it. And a nice victory by Mewtwo King takes it 3-1 over Azen. He beat Azen and, you know, that ended Azen's tournament and Azen would have had Chu and then Ken. And I feel like, you know, even if Azen hadn't beat Ken, that would have been an incredible finals and he definitely would have beat Chu. Uh, and that will do it. Ken takes the victory in another first place style victory knocks to his belt. I think True that was feeling so much pressure where you just sort of would just collapse and just not take anymore, just want to give up and just go back and fly back home to Virginia. He felt like he was being pushed to the end of the wall in the house because of uh, things that probably affected Ken and Manic class performances in tournaments. Uh, I, I, I couldn't try my best during tournaments because I felt as if they would kick me out of the house. And I didn't want that because I was dating Helen. So I kind of held back. I was like, I don't know what to do with myself. Like, I love Ken's, uh, I love Ken's sister, I love my girlfriend, and also I love like, Ken and Manic Club, but they're pushing me so hard that I don't know what to do with myself anymore. And what should I do? Do, do, I go, do I go home? Do I stay here? I don't feel comfortable anywhere because I don't have my East Coast connection anymore, and my West Coast connection is in, is in tatters right now. Should have stuck with Azin and chilling. You know how I wrote down that list of people to beat. Ken was at the top. When I first saw Korean DJ, I would just hear someone say, money match, money match, money match, money match. He was the like final, final like goal and achievement, alongside with being the best ever. He must have chugged like six Red Bulls or something before he went to a tournament because the guy was like hyper. MLG Orlando, winner semis. I have never played as well as I did in MLG Orlando against Ken. I was starting to do things with Sheik that I never thought was possible. DVD popped open, said it was full in the middle of my match against Ken. So I wasn't able to keep it. There are certain things that I was doing with Sheik that I never did again. And I wanted to see what was I doing. He was just very, very aggressive very hyper. It comes to a point where you have to be really defensive against that or be more hyper and aggressive. And I was right in the middle of that. So I guess his style pretty much countered my style. I'm so in the zone and I defeated him. I could read him. I mean, he was an open book, but it doesn't mean anything if you can read a book if every single time you turn the page, you get a paper cut or something like that, you know? Like the entire crowd just went uproaring. They were going crazy. And I just felt like I just won the tournament. And then I play against Azen's Marth. I beat Ken's Marth. I got this. I lost. I beat Ken's Marth. But I lost to Azen. 
within the pros, I mean, certain people did better against other people. And it all goes down to their play styles and their personalities. Muji King is perfect. He plays the game perfectly. And so when you play the game perfectly against someone who's really, really smart, it doesn't matter. Think about Muji King versus Azen. Azen makes the right choice. Let's say Azen makes the right choice every time. Then Muji King, all he has to do is think about what the next step would be to combat the right choice because he's a computer. Input information, what's the winning combination done? So Muji King can beat Azen. Let's say Azen fights Korean DJ. A Korean DJ is a ball of white hot flame. Okay? Azen is not faced by that. Azen is cool as a cucumber. He's Azen is what it is. He just sees the game. So when Korean DJ goes nuts with all his craziness, Azen can just really dash back, F smash, and just sort of take care of him. So Azen can be Korean DJ. I have a Korean DJ with all his fire. Muji King can't combat that. Muji King doesn't know. Those coordinates do not compute. You can't put in Korean DJ what he's gonna do because he's learning as he goes. So Korean DJ can beat Muji King. Azen played KDJ right after he had beaten Ken in the same exact matchup and dominated him. Chu came all the way back through losers and beat KDJ in losers finals, and then that set up Azen versus Chu. Azen actually already beat Chu that early this tournament with Cap Falcon. Oh, I think was, was that a 3-0? It was a 3-0. Yeah, I heard about it. Chu was really looking to win this because Chu had not won an MLG all year. He's been getting the second second to Ken regularly. I can see Azen taking this life off, but it's gonna be hard. But Chu he really good that. with that sidestep. Oh. Really nice sidestep and kind of got him. All right, we got a lot of applause going on for Chu. Yeah, it seems the majority of the people here for Chu, even though Chu's West Coast and this is an East Coast tournament. It's just so hard, and like, there goes his stock. And that was chilling in the background by himself. All that crowd that you hear is just chilling. <laughs> I was I was by the commentator's table, like, freaking out. No one said anything but chilling in the audience for Azen right now. Azen was down three stock to one to choose Ice Climbers on Stadium. Azen's down right now, three stock to one. And he just brought it back and won. Huh? And there's a the game! Sweet! And then Azen wins the tournament! Azen just won Azen Orlando. wins the tournament! And Sean's hugging Azen! A few months earlier, I was considering possibly quitting or whatever, and now, like, we're back on top, so it was sweet. Unfortunately, there's a loser, and Chu looks really disappointed right now. You, you want everyone to be friends after the match, and you just hope Chu doesn't take it any personally. Towards the end of the MLG season, I didn't even place very well, so it was all kind of shaken up in my head. I didn't know what was going on. I started off first, got third at Dallas, second at Anaheim, fifth at Chicago, which was my lowest placing at the time. And then at Orlando, I finished 13th, which was the last one before New York. I lost to Hugs, which honestly, he's always been someone I've struggled with, and he knows that, and I know that. He's one of the few really, really good players that I was able to beat, and that's probably what made a big part of my success as a player, is that I have that ability. Skill-wise, yes, he was better than me. He just seemed to have problems with me, so I greatly enjoyed playing him. <laughs> I didn't want to say, like, oh, I'm not good anymore, like, or I'm not going to be placed in the top three, because even though I might not believe it, like, subconsciously I'm going to be thinking it, and, like, it's just not a good idea. At the playoffs, there's less field of players because the sponsored tournament is not based on like player attendance. The way singles was structured, you had to have like points to get in. If you weren't top seven in points, there was only one spot left to get into that final bracket. And we all knew it was going to be Azen. <laughs> Congratulations to Azen, our level one champion. Right now we got a big matchup coming. We got Ken versus Azen on station one. Ken versus Azen on station one. The first round was just full of these ridiculous matchups, but obviously the most ridiculous was Ken versus Azen because Ken was one seed, Azen was eight seed since he was the one that had won the, 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 you know, the spot. This is Omnigamer reporting from MLG New York 2006 playoffs. Yeah, and this is uh, White here commentating with Omnigamer. Now, uh, this is the probably the biggest matchup of the season, and quite possibly also the biggest matchup of this tournament here, because uh, as many people believe, this head-to-head -head confrontation may very well determine the outcome of the entire tournament today.
blue mark and the red mark, they've always meant one thing. This is East Coast versus West Coast Incarnate. You see, it was the new Adam, it was our hope for East Coast. Exactly. And now Adam's back. Seems a little unsettled right now. He's behind in matches and then behind a percent of this one. Arguably the best player in the world at that time, and you're down three stock to one and about to lose a set if you drop that match. You know, it's not even the deciding match, but you know, he, he didn't have any more matches to give. If Ken wins this one, it's over uh, for this set. Um, Osmond would have to fight his way all the way through losers to yeah, have another a long, rematch. Difficult losers bracket, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll predict Osmond to come back and see Ken again. I will, but it's going to be really difficult. And that's going to have to play as top of his game consistently for several matches in a row. Oh, no. That's it. Oh, oh my Eisen fault. He gets back on. Came back. Just barely. Oh, right. Eisen got no, a 10. It's, it's, it's the mark that oh, it's all going to be about grabs here. Ken gets the first. Ken oh. has the lead, but Eisen can come back with a combo and uh, get him with a wow. spike. But you see that? Okay. I think he's gonna grab it, might have a chance, but he just keeps getting him first. There it is. Uh oh. Use it as in. Keep guessing. If Ken makes a mistake right there, he'd get tippered and the uh -oh. Uh oh. That's a tipper. Do it as in. Ken made a mistake by jumping so early. Oh my god! Oh! Yes. And Ozen oh, pulls it off! Oh, yeah! Ozen at like 130 on his last stock just brought it back. It was the greatest comeback, in my opinion, of all time. People will point to videos where there's a stock difference of a greater comeback, but when Ozen beat Ken and that Marth Ditto, that was out of control. And then ended up like two stocking him last round, so he won pretty solidly. So that alone remains the only time Azen's ever bested Ken in a tournament, ever. And the, the fashion that he did it in, like, that's that's one hell of a way to break a mental block, let me tell you that. Okay, DJ beats M2K, so that sets up Ken versus M2K, first round of losers, and Ken loses. It wasn't fun anymore, pretty much, like, it became like a job more, more so than you know, actually playing the game and having fun. I was getting older. I was traveling way too much. Uh, I don't think my body could take it as much. Like at first, my prime days, like when I first started, um, I could go on Smash for hours and hours and hours. Hours, literally, without even sleep, three days straight playing Smash. After two, three years of doing it, it just, it just takes a toll on you. And there's people out to get you, gunning for you, just like, that's, that's what, what they want to do, just, just beat you. All that, all those emotions, all that stress just like compiled and then having like chilling dude or whatever yelling in my ear next to me, I couldn't handle it anymore. I mean, props to him for like coming back and stuff for three stocks, but I mean, at, at that time and moment, I was just like, I think I needed a break. Also congratulate the East Coast hero Ozen, who took out his West Coast nemesis Ken on his road to his very first Major League Gaming Smash Singles Championship. We're here at MLG's playoff event in New York City where Ozen just won the Smash Singles event. Ozen, congratulations, man. How'd you do it? Thank you. I don't know. I just went all Marth. Marth for me is just, you can be so easily creative with them and he has a very cheap spike, get very cheap kills and forward smash. And just I know, uh, he's just really easy to use. All right, well this makes two tournaments in a row for you, shooting for three in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. All right, well congratulations, and we'll see you in Vegas. MLG Las Vegas, that we have here the epitome of MLG. We were at the Red Rock Casino. This hotel was gorgeous. Chandeliers, but tasteful chandeliers fantastic food. The shower had a mirror so you could watch yourself shower or presumably watch yourself have sex with the hooker. Vegas baby. 
We flew there on MLG's dime. We took a taxi on MLG's dime to get there, stayed in the hotel that MLG paid for. So everyone there already feels like a pro. It was a very unusual tournament. It was a very small, I think you know, top eight only bracket. So being in Vegas, it meant that only a few spectators could turn up and all of them were from the West Coast. So the Ken Alliance turned up again, which is about 12 people. Uh, and a few of the East Coasters turned up with their, so with their you know, support crew and stuff like that. So I think husband and wife were there, JV was there obviously. It was very intimate sort of finals. I was thinking at the time, like, this is, I think this is probably going to be my last tournament. My fire is about to burn out. I got to try. I, I definitely know I can, I can compete and beat these guys. I tried to just narrow, narrow it down to matchups that I liked and that I didn't like. And the only two people I wanted to avoid was Hugs and Asin. My whole life, was to win the MLG Lost Championships. Because that pretty much means you won everything. so aggressive right in Asin's face, not, not giving him any time to breathe. And that is it. Congratulations to Ken. And DJ knew right away, he's ready to go. Yeah, he was just yeah. like that he looks angry. Night. He's hungry for blood. They guys like caged animals just taking turns running train on each other. Guard continues. DJ's in control. Ken's, Ken's in control. Back. He's trying not to die. Uh oh. That's uh -oh. might be it. Oh my god. Oh, the cloud's coming. Alive. Here comes the cloud. Cloud uh, can change it. Oh, oh my god. Like, I was like, alright, this is my tournament. This is my dream. Congratulations to PC Chris. He came in at the beginning of the season, stunned everyone by beating Ken. He outlasts everyone else. He's going to take home $10,000 and be crowned the national champion of Super Smash Brothers. It was almost like a body high. Like I just felt great the entire day. I never wanted to be the best player. That was never my goal. But just like putting my time into something and seeing like these great results, you know, like I couldn't believe like from this game that I picked up with my friends that I able to accomplish something like this. I was, I was set on third. I was like, I'm happy, I'll take third. When he got third and when he didn't become the best player anymore, he's like, you know what, that's okay. I can, I can retire pretty happy because I know that I've done a lot in my time and I was during a pretty, uh, I guess, a uh, golden era of Smash. So even to this day, he'd still be called the king of Smash just because he dominated during that era. I felt like a, a huge weight was left off my shoulders. Like, I can just just be happy. Like, I was just like one game away from 
being the champion. I couldn't go to sleep for about four days. It hit me hard when I'd lost. Like, it really hit me hard. I beat Mewtwo King, I beat Ken, and I got the PC Chris. For some reason, I couldn't beat him. I couldn't beat him. I was so close. And I have to wait another year. <laughs> If I had to pick my favorite Smash player of all time, it would no doubt be Korean DJ. For me, he's the spirit of Smash. He has this, this fire in him that, that's fantastic to watch. Once in an interview, he said that he played the game like a freestyle rap. It was different for him, and you could see it. In game, I mean in high-level tournament matches, you can see him trying new things and learning as he goes. I don't think anyone ever wanted to take a stock so badly in their life. I don't think anyone ever just just hated the character, not the person, the character. He was like, I need to just 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 take these stock and just just destroy them. And it's that kind of mentality, that personality that drove him to fly off the ledge further than people ever had, and just ledge guard in a way that was just rude. Was beautiful to watch. My favorite player of all time. It was one, two, three, that's it. First stop, gone. I just rage quit. I said I couldn't do it. When I saw that Marth, I was like, he's gonna be the best player in the world. Unless you're frame perfect, you're not good enough. He's in that Rain Man world. Muji King can, in fact, recite many, many, many digits of pi. Almost positive he just didn't understand the concept of paying for something in a store. A lot of them felt like Brawl was intentionally made to not be a competitive game, which is true. It's like something broke in his brain and he forever has a mind block. PC, wait, not even PC. M2K and KDJ, so many letters. <laughs> After that, like like a week later, OC2 comes along, and me, me and Manicloud, we get second at that tournament in teens. And, you know, I don't know, it's like, every time me and Manicloud fight, it's like, you know, we do really, really well in teams.